Hi everyone, today let's take a quick look at the economic hardship facing the American people. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel and let's get started. So based on this article, it's saying that Americans are dipping into their retirement savings long before the retirement time. You can see people put money into 401ks, and despite the tax penalties, they are starting to take that money due to financial hardship. These are not massive percentages, but you can see it's continuing to step up year over year. Right now it's at about 3.5%, which again, doesn't seem like a lot, but the trend is a little bit concerning. And this is coming on the back of the wealth effect. People are starting to see their stock values go really high, real estate values going really high, and they are starting to pull that money, which could be a sign that people are starting to take a little bit of profits from the stock market and also talking about and also showing indicators that the U.S. economy continues to look solid and consumer spending remains strong, but there is a little bit of stress underneath the surface. I feel like you could say that almost all of the time, but this is just another piece of data that I think is interesting and worth looking at. Moving over to fear and greed, you can see we finished off last week at a 31 that was down from a 34, and you can see this timeline. It's been basically straight down we're getting very close to those oversold conditions that typically happens between 20 and 25 so just another day or two would put us into those extreme fear conditions you can see last time we got here it did take a little bit of time for that to kind of reverse about a month at those lows so it's not going to be instantaneous but usually that is getting to the end of this kind of a down move you can see market momentum in neutral strength in fear breadth in fear put call ratio and volatility in extreme fear and safe haven demand also in extreme fear you can see that massive drop off people trying to buy up those bonds to get out of equities but junk bond demand is still holding in there pretty strong at extreme greed moving over to the aaii survey you can see we're almost back to normal historical averages 38 versus 37 27.8 versus 31.5 so a little bit less than there and then the bear is coming in hot at a 34 above historical averages we have not seen that in a very long time we've been in the low 20s for several weeks in a row and now we're back into the 30s with a 34 just above that historical average so again starting to see some bearish conditions but as a contrarian metric i don't think we're there yet moving over to seasonality you can see the end of this month is supposed to be pretty bullish so we'll see if that comes to fruition this dip low has been significantly more aggressive than historically than the historical averages but we'll see if that rally comes through it's supposed to be strong and then looking at may you can see it's very weak may is considered one of the worst seasonal periods typically you can see down one percent or more up until the very last week of May. So that does fit with the current thesis of a short-term bounce and then lower lows. So a rally into the end of the month, dip into the middle of next month. And then looking at the calendar, you can see Monday, Tuesday are considered to be bullish. New home sales, semiconductor billings, durable goods on Wednesday, GDP on Thursday, and PCE here on the Friday session. And then moving over to the earnings calendar for next week, you can see Verizon, pretty much the only big player there on Monday. Visa, Tesla, Pepsi, GE, Philip Morris, Texas Instruments, all on Tuesday. So Tuesday is going to be a big one. You also have UPS in there, Lockheed Martin, New Era Energy. Sherman Williams, interesting, usually gives you a good indicator of where the U.S. consumer is. And then looking at Wednesday, another massive one, Meta, Thurman Fisher, Qualcomm, definitely going to be big. IBM services now AT&T Boeing Boeing always going to be interesting in current times waste management General Dynamics Chipotle CME group for all you options traders Ford Motor definitely interesting huge huge earnings week coming up and then looking at Thursday it does not slow down Microsoft Alphabet Merkin Co T-Mobile Caterpillar Comcast Intel Honeywell massive massive earnings week coming up and then looking at friday we start those oil companies exxon mobile chevron abv healthcare definitely interesting colgate palmolive also interesting and that'll round it out for the week moving over to the economic calendar much less exciting monday basically nothing tuesday some economic data here global u.s manufacturing pmi global services pmi definitely want to see those doing well new home sales at 10 o'clock on tuesday and then wednesday core durable goods like we talked about still want to see that coming in quite strong Strong if we can and then looking at Thursday you have GDP pending home sales initial jobless claims Fed balance sheet the usual stuff and then Friday the big one for the week PCE data core and headline coming in at 8:30. currently no forecast for those it'll be interesting to see if they come out with a forecast but we'd like to see that step down pretty significantly we're in a decent area for the headline number 2.5 was the previous read for the year-over-year -year number want to see that continue to trend towards that 2% area and similarly with core you'd like to see that that continue to come down. Moving over to Max Payne for next week, you can see it's up at 508. 
So that's a pretty decent amount higher than current levels. But look at these massive put walls all the way out here at 425 and 450. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near that low. But there are 300,000 puts at that level and 150,000 puts at this level. So tons and tons of puts. And then near the money, there's basically nothing. 40,000, 30,000, some decent put walls, but nothing nearly as strong as these other ones. But in terms of levels here, 500 still having some puts on it at 47,000. That's still the strongest put wall close to the money. And then calls, there's some here at 510, 16,000, really nothing in terms of levels on the call side. So again, and to me, this looks a little bit bullish. I do like this as a contrarian metric, and you can see the put call ratio is just massive. 4.5, super, super high, especially relative to what we've been seeing. I know a lot of that is super far out of the money, but these puts here definitely seem interesting, and it does seem like markets could bounce next week. Moving over to the charts, starting off with the S&Ps here on the monthly chart, you can see we are down 5.46 currently. We still have a trend line just below current price. And then you got one down here at the 9 EMA at 47.21. Momentum stepping to bearish for the first time in a while. You can see November, December, January, February, March, and now April stepping down. So we had many months in a row of bullishness. And if this structure breaks here, then your next trend support is going to be down around 46 to 4,700. And that could could take a couple of months to get down to that area but that is what the monthly chart is currently saying still very much an uptrend in structure if this zone holds but in the short term on the monthly chart it does seem like there's more downside moving over to the weekly chart you can see bearish momentum first week of bearish momentum that we've seen in a long time but the interesting thing here is that 21 EMA at 49 47 I do think this zone is where we're gonna see that initial bounce like I talked about in several videos at this point I think this is the zone where we're going to find a little bit of support, bounce, get a, either a double top, I think that would be a little bit aggressive, more likely I think we see a lower high, get that lower high and then we see that bigger breakdown into the middle of May. But like I said, indicators are still bearish, could be something like this where you see three candles of downside, and a slight bounce, three more candles of downside, slight bounce, three more candles. If we get a push like that, absolutely this zone does seem like where we're headed, back down into the 4600s, which would be a pretty substantial pullback, absolutely, but once we get into that zone, zone then I do think we would be then you would want to start to look for a change in structure just like we got here so you got to push down lower end of the range found support strong candle and that change in structure drove many months of bullishness and then moving over to the spy you, on the daily chart you can see that same zone critical trend line here we were watching this as a falling wedge. We did break down a little bit. Doesn't mean that we can't overthrow and then come back through. And then you would be looking for a retest of this highly traded zone here around 514, 515. And then that's going to pull in all of the sellers. People are going to exit their positions. And then once we start to get that dump off, I think it's going to be even more aggressive. And then you could be looking back down in this 475 area, which is the same level that we talked about on the previous chart. This is just here on the SPY. So short term bounce, I think it's going to happen. Should be a pretty decent move and then you're going to be looking for much more downside in my opinion moving over to the tasty charts you can see we are back into the middle of the range ATR stop here at 485.55 so weekly chart still in bullish conditions middle of the range this is the zone that needs to hold 21 EMA middle of this ATR range that's where I'm looking for that bounce and that's why I'm looking for it relatively soon Monday or Tuesday and then once we get that lower high setup then it's going to be much lower in my opinion and then you would be looking for a move back down to that lower ATR which is actually a little bit lower than the previous chart that would be down around 460.50 if we did get down to that low I definitely think that would be an opportunity and you could see that does look very similar to this previous move hit the upper ATR we were more aggressive on this move hit the middle of the zone saw the bounce came through that and then almost touched that lower ATR so maybe we come up a little bit short and then see a bigger move higher it's certainly possible but that is the current setup in my opinion and then looking at that daily chart you can see we've taken out all the EMAs and SMAs except for the 144 which is down at 4 82.55 and then you can see strong volume coming through on that candle and it was a strong selling candle but it's already been a decent down move that could be the end of a move and you can actually see here on the hourly chart that biggest volume on the Friday session actually came on a bullish candle right at the end of the session so certainly seems like we could be bottoming at least in the short term still very much a downtrend but big volume like that can absolutely reverse conditions ATR stop here up around 518 this will continue to come down a little bit in my opinion come into that 515 area which is where i'm expecting to find resistance on that short-term bounce moving over to the queues massive down week 
0.39%. Absolutely terrible. Momentum and RSI, obviously super bearish. But the interesting thing is this trend line here. So you can see marks some levels here, marks that clear top back in July, marks some consolidation here, and now we are right in that zone. So this is interesting. If it's going to bounce, this is where I think it would do it. And this is also a bit of a confirmation to the SPY. We're right in an interesting area, pretty clear trend line. Want it to bounce here, get that lower high, get a little bit of a relief rally, make a little bit of profits, and then it's going to be pretty bearish conditions in my opinion. Haven't seen a massive bearish week like this in a long time on the NASDAQ, 5% to the downside. I can't even remember the last time. We did get that in January of 22 at 7.5%, percent one here in June of 22 at 5.5%. So we've seen it a couple of times, but this is aggressive for the NASDAQ for sure. Not super common. And you'll notice in all of those down moves, there was more downside to come. That was a reversal of conditions kind of candle, which does fit with my thesis. I do think this is going to go lower eventually, but there needs to be a relief rally for that to happen. And then in terms of structure, you can see just straight falling knife, same trend line. Got the 144 down there at 405, 50 or so. Again, massive volume coming through on that last candle of the week. That's part of why I think this might be a bit of a bottom here. Maybe you get a little bit of sideways chop and then a bounce. Highly traded zone around that 438 area. You can see that consolidation of EMAs. So you get a bounce, hit that zone, lower high setup, and then you get that bigger breakdown in my opinion. Moving over to the tasty charts, you can see the NASDAQ did overthrow that mid-range. We're getting close to those ATR stops, which are at 401.44. So again, still bullish conditions. Eventually you would expect it to come through, just like we saw here, almost got to those ATRs and then eventually went back to bullish. Similarly to the SPY, we did see some volume coming through on that candle. We're past the mid-range here. Your next level of support would be 406.99, which again is pretty decently lower from current prices if we don't get a bounce on that trend line like I talked about. But looking at the daily chart here, you can see we're definitely in bearish conditions, but look how extended past that lower ATR band we are, 419.55. Not super common here. And when we do get into that lower ATR band area, that is typically where we do see bounces. So keep that in mind definitely seems extended at least in the short term got the 144 EMA sitting there at 410.80 so maybe we go 1% lower touch that and then bounce but massive volume coming through on that last candle of the week which again to me means I think this might be done in the short term looking for that short term bounce moving over to the Russell you can see three weeks in a row of bearishness 2.79 to the downside this is a critical zone though so we have the 144 and the 200 SMA need that zone to hold that's currently at 192.75. We did close above it, so that's bullish. Momentum obviously bearish. RSI still bearish. Momentum ramping, volume ramping up on this down move, so that's not great either. But you can see previous iterations, three big bearish candles, find some support in that EMA area, slight bounce, then you get more downside. So here, I think this is probably where we're going to see that bounce. Does fit with the thesis. And you can see we're coming off resistance. We've had this before. Bounced off that 200, found a higher high. So structurally, you would expect it to bounce here. And then looking at that daily chart, you can see the Friday session actually was bullish, 0.16. And then you can see momentum starting to swing back towards the bullish side. Last time we had that, we got a pretty decent follow through. Bounced from that level all the way back to the 199, 200 area after getting all the way down to the 188 area. So if we get a move like that would fit right with that thesis at least back to 200 right in that EMA area at the 55 21 and VWAP moving over to the tasty charts you can see that move down from the second ATR band now we're at that first ATR band to the downside momentum and ours momentum still bearish but again consolidation of EMAs if it's going to hold needs to do it here otherwise we're probably headed to that lower ATR band back down around 175 or so current ATR support is that 19068 level so again right in line with what we've been looking at for a potential bounce and then looking at the daily chart you can see we're hitting that lower ATR band that is the zone where you tend to find some support that is currently at 19201 and then you have your ATR stops up at 20560 so maybe we get even a little bit higher on that bounce than the trading view charts were indicating. Moving over to the Dow, you can see it was down just 0.02 on the week. Momentum and RSI still bearish, volume ramping up on that level, but you can see 379.35 indicating an area of support. We tested that two weeks in a row. It's finding a level. Again, fits with the thesis. If it's going to bounce, you would expect it to do it next week. It's been a pretty decent down move, over 5% from the highs already. And to me, I think this is probably going to bounce in this zone like I talked about. And then looking at the daily chart, it looks more likely that it's going to bounce here. You can see three days of consolidation, bullish candle on the Friday of half a percent. Looks pretty good. Rally up to three. 8777 makes sense. 
You can see this highly traded zone right there, consolidation of EMAs at a resistance level, makes sense for a bounce to that zone. And then looking at momentum, same thesis, you can see this is continuing to roll to bullish. You can see volume coming through on that last candle, which was a bullish one. Moving over to the ratios, you can see the Russell actually outperformed just a little bit. So we hit that resistance 2.59, SPY started to sell off, Russell started to outperform, and it does seem like that is set to continue here. That is good, so that gives you an indicator to push more towards the Russell side, and then you can see now NASDAQ dumpster fire. It is in a zone of support, 3.43, trend line here, 55 EMA there. Momentum and RSI still bear it, so it seems like the NASDAQ might continue to underperform. Again, keeping that in mind, this is still bearish conditions for the NASDAQ. But the Russell, interesting, showing some potential over the next week. Moving over to SPY divided by the M2 money supply, you can see those three bearish weeks. Took out that 24.49 level. Again, interesting zone here. So this is where you would expect to bounce, just like we saw in all of the other charts. This is the area. You'd want to see that bounce, potentially retest 2449, maybe overthrow it a little bit, and then you would expect it to come back down. And if it does, then you'd be looking all the way back down to that 2205 area, which would be the highs back here from July. So this ratio fitting with the thesis, short-term bounce, we'll see how it plays, and then you would expect that bigger down move. And that would also fit with a bounce from the 50 on the RSI, bounce that level, retest the SMA, and then we'll see that coming down more momentum not super convincing yet this is just barely getting started could see a move like this where you get a dip two weeks of bearishness one week of bounce so similar to this move just like we talked about from that july down move but overall spy versus m2 continuing to fit with the thesis moving over to the mag 7 here on the weekly chart you can see it was a dumpster fire of a week 8.9 percent down on the mag 7 i don't know if we've seen a candle like that ever on the mag 7 at least not in recent history zooming all the way out here you can see you have to go all the way back to December of 18, there was a 10% down move there. 8.85% in January of 21. So based on that, if this is the start of a move like this, that means there's more downside to come and we need to be significantly more cautious. Doesn't mean we can't see big up moves like this where you touch a level, find some support, hit the 21 and then break down further. That's kind of what I'm looking at right now. We haven't even hit the 21 to the downside yet. That's currently at 317.18 and it's right in line with the trend line as well. You can see that trend line, pretty important one, marks the bottom here in November, marks the bottom here in March, marks that same bottom in October. So it's been an important trend line, many, many interactions that have shifted trading. So if it touches here, see a little bit of a bounce, maybe get back into the 350s, and then we see this continue lower, potentially all the way down to that 55 EMA around the 270 area, right at my level of support there as well, 267.50. And you can see it here on the daily chart, significant trend sitting down around 320, momentum and RSI bearish, and you can see RSI almost an oversold at 31.7. So maybe one or two more days, hit the trend, maybe overthrow it, and then we'll see that bounce in my opinion. Moving over to stocks that moved this week, you have American Express up 5.88 percent so they reported earnings they were very strong strong volume momentum swinging back to bullish this is all-time highs here for american express looks like it's going to overthrow that previous high from the 18 march week looking like it's going to push to the trend line potentially up around 242 or so looks very good and then looking at netflix obviously a dumpster fire on earnings we did a whole video on it 21 ema sitting there at 550 it's overthrown my 559 level momentum and rsi super bearish big volume on the move you can see no volume here on the profile on this previous move i think that was their previous earnings back here in january so really strong earnings previously and now the earnings were not great and we sold off over 10 percent and the question is is this unique to netflix or is this a bad omen for the upcoming earnings so far things are selling off into earnings so maybe we should be in better shape maybe expectations will move a little bit lower let's go ahead and extend out this trend line so then you would have some trend support potentially down around 530 maybe we need to go a little bit lower touch those levels and then see a short-term bounce i don't really think anything changed with the netflix thesis but you have to respect the technicals and right now price is headed lower Moving over to Apple and Tesla, you can see both of these were terrible on the week, 6.54, and Tesla was down 14%, absolutely a dumpster fire. You can see Apple breaking down that 165 level, and you can see the thesis that we've been talking about, no volume really up until we get into this highly traded zone down around 150, so it seems like we're going to push towards that level, 200 SMA down around 152, right at my level 154, so if this breaks, there is some trend support in here, but you would expect it to overthrow to the support level in my opinion. 
This does not look good for Apple. Momentum bearish, RSI looking like it's going to head lower. And then looking at Tesla, we talked about it. Down move, bear flag, down move. Current price target around 125. We're currently looking at the gap fill. You can't see it here on the weekly chart, but there's a gap fill in here. Hasn't quite filled the gap yet. There's some trend support down around 140 or so. Still very much a downtrend and it looks like it's headed lower. Moving over to Amazon and NVIDIA, I've been continuing to watch these two. As the bigger bellwethers in markets right now, Amazon 6.18 to the downside, but NVIDIA down 13.59 to the downside. Seems like the NVIDIA run is done, at least for the short term. 741.75 is that next zone of support. You also have trend support just below it. It's actually right on top of the trend line for this next week. Continues to crater RSI, breaking down massive, big volume. If this structure breaks here, there is a lot of room to the downside. I know I've been saying that a lot, but that's where we're at in markets. We're in a zone where we need to find support either now or within the next couple of days. And if we don't, this is going to get significantly more ugly in the short term. Moving over to staples and discretionary, you can see it is clearly risk off right now. Staples were bullish on the week, 1.44, got back above 74. Momentum, not great. Our RSI still in a zone where it could find resistance, but I would expect this to head a little bit higher. You can see big wick rejection actually went lower on the week first and then bounced. Probably just came into the zone of resistance. You can see it here, July of 23, tested that level broke down a little bit. Markets were bearish, but now we're seeing staples come back in. We'll see how it plays with the Pepsi earnings, but you can see very clear thesis came down, consolidation of EMAs, found support, pushed to the highly traded zone. Want to see it break that. And then you can see discretionary dumpster fire, 4.14% to the downside momentum and RSI very bearish. Next support, 166.78. So more downside here. And then the 200 sitting just below that 164. So again, if this zone breaks, who knows where we're headed, could go anywhere. But right now it looks looks bearish, at least in the short term. And then if this structure breaks here, then it looks even more bearish for the longer term. Moving over to transports and financials. I think these are still interesting here. So transports down a lot, 2.59. You can see we've broken all the structure here. You have a support level at 6489. You can see the highly traded zone there as well. Need it to bounce there. Otherwise we're headed to the 55, in my opinion, down at 62. And if that happens, markets are going to be selling even more aggressive. It was a clear topping pattern and structure is definitely broken. And it's done it before. You can see moves like this where you hit the top of the channel and just absolutely crater. Went from 66 all the way down to 52, 76 or so. And then we rallied all the way back to 71. So transports have been quite volatile and it would not shock me if this dumped here. And then looking at financials actually found a little bit of bullishness on the week after their earnings. So that's encouraging. Bounced off of VWAP. Maybe we see a little bit more bounce into next week. It's been a run. You can see so many weeks in a row of bullishness. Two here of downside. And to me, it's seems like we're going to find a bit of a bounce in financials. Moving over to breadth, you can see breadth caught a pretty big bounce. So the 20 day got all the way down to 5.96, which is a pretty deep low. And then we ended up bullish on the week. So that is indicating a short term bounce. I do think it's going to come. Could get another week of bullishness hit that mid range, that would be pretty bullish. And then you would expect some bearishness again. So similar to this bounce, short term high, dip low, two more weeks of bearishness, and then we'll see. And then similarly on the 50 day, big wick rejection getting down to that 26 area, critical zone. You can see that same wicks here, got a bounce. Same wicks here, got a bounce. This is a zone where you tend to see bounces. Not that it would be long lived, a couple of weeks, and then you would see a continuation lower in my opinion. And then we'd look for these lower lows around that 15 area. And that's typically where you start to see the bottoming of markets. You can see this got all the way down to 6.36. That is not super common. And that was the indicator that drove markets to these most recent highs and massive rally from that October low to current price. That's not what we're looking at here, but just a short term bounce does seem like it's in the cards. Moving over to the 200 day breadth, you can see we got down to 64.75, big wick rejection from that level. That's where we got before, tested it, a few weeks of bullishness, tested it again, many more weeks of bullishness, tested it again. We'll see if we get a couple of weeks here. Does seem like we would. Momentum and RSI still bearish, but it's hanging in there at a zone of support. If it's going to do it, it's probably going to do it now. Otherwise, we're probably headed much lower down in the 52s. So again, same thesis, critical zone this week needs it to need to hold. Otherwise, we're going to be headed much lower. Moving over to yields, you can see the two year has consolidated for a few weeks now, right at these highs, right around that 5% area. It does seem a little extended. It does seem a little exhausted. If it's going to pull back, 
Again, 21 EMA, 200 SMA, short-term pullback, find some support, and then we'll see. 10-year, similar thesis. It is still holding support, so 455 is your support level. We tested that on Friday, caught a bounce from that level, along with that 9 EMA right there. So 10-year doesn't look as weak. Two-year, definite consolidation. Looks like it could dip low. Either way, both of these are extended. You can see overbought conditions on the 10-year yield. Short-term pullback, 21 EMA test. Then we could see bounce, in my opinion. Moving over to the dollar on the weekly chart, you can see basically flat 0.1. You can see that in very important trend resistance, super critical level, marked many tops and bottoms here throughout, throughout the last several years. And we are right there once again, right now, testing that trend line. We got some clear rejection on the daily chart. We talked about it on the Friday video. Looks like it's going to consolidate. Could take a while, a couple of weeks, give markets a chance to catch up. Maybe we see a short-term pullback, find some support down around these previous highs around 105. Then you catch a bounce and push back up, and that would fit with the overall thesis. If it breaks down even stronger, though, that could give markets even more strength. But I still, but overall, I think it's going to reject. The question is how hard. Moving over to bonds, you can see JNK was down 0.47, but we got into a zone of support, 92.50, critical zone. Didn't touch that 55 EMA, so slightly bullish found support up to 93 held that level you can see those important wicks here that got tested if it's going to bounce again seems like the spot to do it otherwise this is probably headed down to 90 91 maybe even lower to these wick lows around 90 50 or so momentum and rsi still say bearish but you can see that's a pretty big wick closed in the middle of the candle could go either way and then similarly tlt 1.26 to the downside momentum and rsi bearish but again wick rejection off of trend support you can also see these previous consolidation tops on the bodies of those candles right around that 87.95 area. Tested those on the wick. It just seems a little bit extended to the downside. We've moved from about 100 all the way down to around 87.88. And then if it bounces from here, maybe we get a lower high, similar to the inverse of the yield of the yield thesis. Moving over to volatility, you can see volatility continues to look pretty strong. So again, talked about this in the Friday video. I think we're probably going to get at least one, maybe two more candles of upside. I don't know if we'll overthrow or not. We'll stay relatively elevated. But momentum starting to fade, definitely hit overbought conditions, which is not super common on the VIX. And looking at it here on the weekly chart, you can see we hit that 200 SMA at 2065 rejected from that area hit the 144 so we're hitting those longer term EMAs and SMAs as potential resistance and last time we did hit those levels that was the area where we rejected saw a pretty significant down move and markets were able to consolidate and go higher similar thesis reject from this area in my opinion Moving over to my accounts, I was down about 1.7%, which is not great. NASDAQ was down over 5, so still outperformed a little bit, but I would have wanted to do a little better. Still playing defense here, got some puts and some calls, continuing to collect on the call side to protect that position. And then the Russell, doing fine. Russell seems like it's going to get a bounce a little bit sooner. The structure is already starting to form, similar to the Dow. So more defensive on the Qs, a little bit more bullish here on the IWM going into the Monday-Tuesday sessions. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of American dipping into their retirement accounts early is that a warning sign to you or is it just another piece of noise definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes of course none of this is financial advice this is all for entertainment purposes good luck in your trading and have a great day